So guys, just give you a brief tour of the base. A lot of people have been asking for base tours. We've done it in the last one and people actually liked us doing it. So I'm just going to give a quick brief show the base, what's inside. You come through to this area here. Now, that door's there simply because there's a door trap. Alright, shotgun trap below. If you're running in, you manage to get through the first door. Someone's chasing you. It's going to cover your body. That door's not included in how much it takes to get through here. It's seven doors to get through. When you open this door again, you've got a placed shotgun trap that comes through. You don't have to put that there. You might want to block that off or put a drop box there. It's completely up to you. It's all sealed from above as well. You come through here. You've got some drop boxes here. You might want to put the shotgun trap there instead. Completely up to you. As you look up into this area, I've utilised this space by putting some furnaces. You can put some boxes up here if you want or you might want to put a turret or a trap completely up to you. I put some furnaces here. It's just what I decided to do with this concept of the build. You see, these are all doored up, so everything's sealed completely. Put a little drop box up here as well. You'll notice one thing, you cannot hear the turret when that door's closed. So if someone is going deep in your base and they blew this door away, you managed to get this door open you can then open that door and the turret is now going to shoot them. Okay, that's the reason why I put that there, no, nothing else. You could effectively put another box there as well if you want. It's completely up to you how you do it. We come down here. Turn the turrets, turn these off. See, this was your front door to start with when you start a base. We switched it all around. So you may have to break some things and move them around to actually get it in place. You've got a simple area bed just to respawn or repair bench you could put a scrap bench in there instead the set's up to you um, I use a repair bench more than use a scrap to be honest go into the loot room cupboards at the back you can put the cupboard in the honeycomb if you want it's your choice um, ample loot space for solo jewel um, remember my builds are only made for like two three day wipes a little area for furnaces again you might want to swap it around you could have your furnaces at the back of that wall instead and you have your um, bed or a sleeping bag just to save space halfway through a door. It's your own concept will come into play here. It's how you like to set things out. I'm not the best at doing compact bases, the layouts of them, but there is a lot of videos on YouTube. Compact 1x1, one one, Compact 2, Compact 2x2, two two, etc, etc. Have a look at them, see how they've laid theirs out. They've got little tricks to put stuff above the doors, like boxes and lights. I don't really do all those little things. So that is the base in its entirety. Up to you how you lay it out. Have a play around. You might think of different ways. You might not use a shotgun trap at the front. It's up to you.
So when you get to this position, all your roof's done, it's fully secure, you've got your two floors in place, you've got it practically there. I mean, the next section is really just getting everything prepared for putting the double stack in to give that extra floor. Now, I'm going to show you to do a shotgun trap if you haven't seen any of my other clips before. I like to put stairs in just so I can run because I'm lazy and I'm not that fucking good at jumping for some reason. Put this in place. This is just a deterrent more than anything. To help you, I would put a scaffold in place just so you can get up quite easy. Take a triangle twig piece and basically just block yourself in. That's all you need to do. You're going to upgrade everything apart from the bottom floor tile. That's going to be there. Pop that way. You put your shotgun in that triangle. And it shoots anyone and destroys anyone that tries to run in. That is pretty much it. You don't have to use it. It's completely up to you. I just think it's an extra deterrent you can put in place. Which is actually quite useful. Now... Once it's all secure, you've got your hatch, as I said, you're ready to start utilising this floor. Secure this up, you can use a single door, a double door, it's completely up to you what you do, alright? It's, it's your own preference of how you want to do it. Now, I had this as an open area, so I had a, that, then a wall in place, blocked that up. Put it in line. For here, I had a simple little drop-off point. And I blocked this up so I can start utilising it. Put it on top. Voila. This will obviously be closed off as well. It was behind combed. You can utilise this little area as well. I mean, I'd advise it. Use as much as you can. It's, it's important that you do, to be honest. Now, once that's in place, you really want to start putting the roof down. Now, I mentioned before, this is going to be your front door now, okay? But it does leave a gap here. Now, you've noticed I've got triangles at the end of every square. That's to give it an extra four rockets. That's all it's for. We're not going to put roof pieces on them either. We're simply going to build them up, put walls on top of them, and I'll show you why later. It gives you a little bit of an option. Put this in place, then drop a triangle off it. You see, every single square has got a triangle coming off the end of it. Just that's what makes it the 12 rockets to get through, okay? Now, coming through the roof is a bloody no no for them because it's that is absolutely stacked to hell. They come through the sides, from the top, it doesn't make a difference. It's going to be an absolute pain in the ass, regardless. Now I'm going to fast forward on and I am going to put all these walls in place and I'm going to show you how an easy way to do the roof pieces in stage by stage. If you're okay with them then it's fine but some people struggle to put the roof pieces in place. So I'm going to fast forward now and show you the quicker method on how to do it. So if you're someone that does struggle with roof pieces, get the build to this state. Where it's all hollow around the sides and you've got all these pieces in place. All the triangles come off the squares, left like that. Take it to that position and that position only. If you do struggle with roof pieces, if you don't normally struggle with roof pieces, don't worry about it. Just fly ahead, do what you're going to do. Bear in mind, you always have to have a wall below or a wall piece for the roof to work. So make sure they're always in place, okay? Now, the quick method to do it is this. People jump too far ahead. Do it from inside the honeycomb. It's as easy as that. You do it from inside the honeycomb, you can see it click in place, and it's just so much easier. Sometimes it won't want to do it, try crouching or just moving up and down, it will click into place. Close it all up. Now, this is probably the most expensive part, alright? But you need to do it, because this is what's giving you your protection from above. 
even though I'm a strong believer that doors are still the main way of getting raided at the minute, regardless of what anyone says. Now, you see there is little gaps in some places, don't worry about them, it's part and parcel. They're still going to have to blow that main bit down to actually get through. Now, I'm going to steam ahead again, but what you need to do next is honeycomb all these walls, alright? Same as any other honeycomb, but you have to put the pieces in place here as well, okay? These need to be in place. Anyways, a triangle, put a triangle. Anyways, a square, put a square. Work your way all around. You need to have this in place. I know some people don't like doing the honeycomb and they think, yeah, I'm going to leave it. The reason for this being is simple. For you to be able to put your half wall in place, go to here, it needs to be able to connect from the back. Which section did I just do there? Oh, I can't actually find the section I've done. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There you go. That enables you to then put them in place. Try and find. I'll try standing. I put the floor pieces in there. Have I, yeah, I haven't done the full piece there yet. So that's a good demonstration, to be fair. So now, if I put that in place, that in place, and triangle again, square, triangle, 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 square. So look, last time I struggled really badly to get that done. Now, you don't have to put a square piece here, it's up to you if you want to actually put one there. But now, see, it worked perfectly. That's what's going to give you your actual set of protection there. Now, it's up to you if you want to use these pieces here. Personally, I wouldn't, and I'd have that open so you can put like a little drop box in this section here. You're also going to have the ability to stack that piece as well so you can have a little drop box above your door it's just about utilizing the space you've got you don't have a lot of it so you need to make sure you use as much as you can when you put the double doors in place as well that's going to start close all these areas off so you can get really inventive in what you're going to do where you're going to put things as well see this now becomes a little section of its own where you can put boxes start making airlocks with the doors so if you leave the doors open when you go out you got a rush leave them all open people can't actually get through you can maybe get to the little boxes there but it just gives you that different element of what you want to do and people come in from above yes they come through this one it's one less floor but still have to go through the doors and they are gonna have a nightmare getting through it's as simple as that so I'm going to press head again, stone all that section up, and honeycomb the internal walls as well. Just to give you a quick insight of what it looks like from the outside. Now, you can see, it's starting to all be locked off. If you really want and you don't like these gaps, then you can go inside and start patching them through. It's completely up to you, but don't waste too much resource on it. Um, I think this roof's going to put a lot of people off anyway. So, all the roof pieces are in place, all the honeycombs are in place as well, I'll take you through it. See, every single wall's got it. Everything's stoned up inside. I've also put high walls outside as well, now that adds in our four rockets, and it's not going to do any difference if someone goes above it and takes a roof piece out with it. It's not going to make a difference, it's not going to take it down, so at the minute we're at 16 rockets. I started this build with 100k stone and I had to redo 4,000 stone worth. I've now got 42,000 left, add 4 to that's 46, so it cost me roughly about 54k to build this. And I started with 100k wood, so for a duo that's not a lot. And remember you're going to be using metal as well, as and when you get it. You don't have to do shotgun traps, that's going to save you maybe a thousand. 
The pieces where I said leave the triangles in place at the end, that was just to put these metal barricades on. Now, you could put your foundations higher and maybe sneak a turret on there as well, so if they tower up, the turret can take them. But turrets are expensive, a lot of people use them in the build videos. I don't see the point, to be honest. Not everyone's going to get a turret. Some solo players like to disappear to the north or disappear to the south, away from rad towns, make the builds and just see out the wipe. And they don't come across the turret. They don't see enough boxes to actually get them. So I'm pulling away from anything that you have to physically go and try and find and just use normal trash pile resources. So I've used the metal barricades instead. Now, taking in here, Counting the doors, I'm not going to count the first one. This is just here as a shotgun trap, last state of affair. And you can tower in and jump onto this bit, alright? So we're not going to count that door. We have one, two. Oh. Three. That would be four. Five. This kind of door, six. Seven, then eight. It's up to you if you want to put a double door in this place as well, but remember this was your one by one, so if you want to do that, if you want to pick it out, great. If not, you have to do it in wood, so it's completely up to you. Now, this was your main door at the start, that can still be used, you can utilize that for space as well. You've seen in the intro, I put different things in here, I put furnaces in this place, you might not want to do that, alright? You might want to have your furnaces upstairs in the first bit you come in. Well, all your loot in here. Now, just to show, as you can through this back piece, you've got the triangle foundation to go through, a square, and the triangle. So that's three foundations to get to that. So it's 12 rockets without the high walls, okay? I'll look out foundations, not walls, because I'm raiding all state foundations on smaller buildings. It's a lot more economical. And taking walls. Walls, you're doubling what you're using, so always go for foundations. I say every single time, always use foundations. The high walls are a nice height, so they actually fully protect, so they're going to have to take the wall down if they're going to go through with rockets instead of taking the doors. So don't copy it like for like. I know it's not got a lot of space, but make your own little spin on it. You can even take this up higher if you wanted to, and put another hatch here. Use the old hatch stacking trick that I showed two videos ago for the pillar box bunker and just pull it up it's completely up to you, it's the main concept of the footprint that I'm trying to get across do not duplicate it all the way through please don't have to use a shotgun trap either, that's completely up to you 